We all know the frustration of being outscaled by late game carries that become unstoppable regardless of how well we played in the early game. But with Cassidy's immense scaling potential, you have the ability to take the game in your own hands and not have to rely on your team in the late game. But he's a special case because his laning phase is actually strong, something no one knows about. And in this guide, I will show you how to set up the full potential of this late game powerhouse, which is what I did on my challenger climb this season. First, I'll cover the laning phase in detail for the good and bad matchups using actual gameplay rather than just explaining. So I usually start skill 2 because it empowers your next basic attack and also makes it ranged, allowing you to trade level 1. Which you can also use to bully melee champions if they step too close. And if they don't, you can just wait for them to last hit and then punish. Just make sure you're in position first and be ready to dodge their ability. This is the only ability that draws minion aggro so you need to then step back and if they try chasing, they'll get punished by your minions. So next I take skill 3, which damages and slows that are used to last hit and poke or to poke on their last hit or everything at once given the opportunity. And if you hit them, the slow allows for an easy follow-up for your other abilities. Including skill 1, which is a long-range silence. It's a single target skill shot, so they can just stay behind minions to dodge. But skill 3, the slow, is sure to range. So here, when I try punishing his last hit a bit late, he just steps back out of range. Because of Cassidy's weak early game wave clear, you will often get pushed in. I can't follow because this is 250 gold, which is almost a kill and half a level of experience. So I kill it as fast as possible to help the team out if needed. Lee is forced to give up blue, so I rotate to Gragas, who is trying to counter our blue because he knows that our jungler can't get there in time. And he doesn't see me coming and smites early. My Yasuo also followed up with me because Gragas was on vision, but here, we encounter Cassidy's biggest weakness. This kind of poke is great for lane, but in a long skirmish, you're not the most useful champion with your useless melee attacks. Even if you get the second rotation of your spells, they're only good for short trades in the lane, but the overall damage is not enough for a real fight. This is true even for lane, so it's important to keep your trades short and then back up into your wave for safety otherwise they will out DPS you. So here we should have just accepted the blue buff and his flash and backed off because after that I'm useless and that's a level 3 Urgot who's got really good consistent damage. Now I'm late to lane so I'm forced to once again deal with the minion wave while Corky can run so I spam ping them to retreat and then fast push the wave to force the Corky back. And at this point with Ultima Kasten becomes a straight up lane bully because it's pretty much a longer flash and it damages wherever you land. But its damage is low unless you charge the stacks by using it back to back because each additional charge will give you more and more damage. But it will also increase its mana cost and buy a lot, so at 2 charges it costs almost half your mana in the early game. So you probably don't want to miss it. And at 3 charges it will cost almost all of your mana, so definitely don't misclick it. But in most situations just wait 12 seconds to reset the stacks back to 0 before using it in the early game. So it's important to be at the right stack at the right time because you can use your ultimate to get to a fight quicker. And when you do get there, you're at a higher stack to do more damage. But if you're at the wrong stack and you ult to get to a fight faster, by the time you get there, you've used up too much mana. 
and then the next ultimate will cost even more mana. So now you have no ultimate to reposition or to deal damage. Here I ended up hesitating and then when I finally flashed, it was too late and we lost that fight because of it. Late game however, is another story. A tip for your first item, a Road of Ages gets stronger with time, so you should back as soon as you can afford it, rather than staying on the map for more gold, even if it would otherwise be the correct move. But I made the mistake of backing too early, so I have to go again. And because of that, Corky gets another free roam. So to punish by denying the wave to his tower, I end up using my ultimate charges and too much mana to fast push the wave, so now I can't ultimate to the fight. And when I get there, late, I'm low on mana and with no damage on my ultimate. My ignite doesn't go off and flash to dodge his hook, but I retreated too far and can't counter attack Jinx with my ultimate. And I end up getting a shutdown at least before dying, so now I'm ahead of Corky and can afford the tear item, which is another item that ramps up over time, so it's important to get to this point as soon as possible. Despite this scoreline, my late game scaling will be enough for me to carry the game. And by the way, I want to thank everyone that supports my work on Patreon. It really is helpful because it actually motivates me to spend more time on making guides. So thank you. And I will do a quick rundown of this full game so you guys can see what a late game casting looks like and plays like. But the tactics for the mid and late game will be covered properly in part 2 of my casting guide which is currently up on Patreon for early access before I release it on YouTube. And the link for that is in the description. So back to the game, my laning is going fine, but the rest of the team is getting destroyed. But I know that as long as I survive the mid game, there's still a chance, so I just need to keep my team in the game. So I respawn and see top lane is low, so I ult my way up there as fast as I can. And get a shutdown. Farm the wave get a few plates, help Lee Sin with Herald. I go mid and because my ult is fully stacked, I use it for damage and we get another kill. But the rest of the fed members arrive and kill us both and then take mid tower to make things worse. However, now I have my two scaling items, so from here I will only get stronger. Next I go to cover bot, take the farm and stop them from taking the tower, go back and clear mid and rotate top and try catching the cookie. But I can't stay here without any vision. And here, I went back in for a kill, because my ult is fully stacked. I go from out of vision and we engage on Urgot 2v1. But then I get overconfident and get baited by Gragas, which is the last thing you want in the mid game where Kastin should be farming for levels and gold to get to his late game quicker. Next I go for death gap before finishing my boots because having enough damage to finish off kills is usually the best way to make a comeback. Again, I stay out of vision until we can engage as a group.
And then I go and defend bot tier 2, but I'm still not a late game Cassidy yet, so I still can't fight bruisers such as Ergot. But now with Deathcap, I have enough burst to assassinate a squishy target if I set up an ambush. I flashed on Ergo because I thought my team was gonna follow up, but it's fine, we can just take the free dragon. Now I need level 13 ASAP for max level ultimate, so I go and push out bot lane. And this game is from when Ergo was newly released, so I wasn't aware of his CC, and I got feared into chain CC. I push the next two waves and recall. Head to mid where Ergo is trying to shove the wave, and because I have follow up with me, I can fight Ergo and Lee Sin makes another great play and we just follow up with damage. But then I mess up with over aggression by ulting right into a charging hook and again get CC locked before my team can respond. But then before the third dragon, I once again got over aggressive and had to use my stasis. Lee Sin fails a play on Ergo with Guardian's Angel. Once again, I tried doing too much and got altered by Ergo. That could have cost us the game, because they take Dragon for free and would have killed our entire team into Baron. But our 1 in 5 Jin pulls off a miracle and saves the game. I get back out there, shove a side wave and try staying out of vision and look for a flank. We get their support, but that's not enough to force anything else because they're still really strong. So I go and shove a side lane again to complete my build. And now, I can pretty much blow up any squishy target that gets close to me. So again, I start looking for flanks. I get him to waste package and go back to looking for a flank. Which they've now started to ward and cover. So I go all the way around to look for a completely different angle where I see an unsuspecting Corky so I stay out of vision until I can ambush. Then I see Jinx so again stay behind the wall to surprise attack. She survives with barrier, flash and stasis but the team fight is already over with both of their carries taken out of the fight.
From here we could have possibly ended the game, but we decided to Elder and Baron. Meanwhile Yasuo dies split pushing, but it doesn't really matter because the game is already over with Baron buff and Elder buff. But I didn't go into detail of exactly what to do during the mid and late game because I want to cover that properly in a full dedicated video. I just wanted to show this full game so you can see what a late game Cassidyn is capable of. So laning against Corky wasn't all that hard. What you really need to know is how to survive the harder matchups, and I'll show you exactly how. So you will most commonly be against players that don't understand the matchup, or players that make a lot of mistakes in lane, which I'll show you exactly how to punish. So against mages with long range wave clear, stay away from your minions because they want to push the wave and damage you at the same time. So you can just position on either side and force them to choose one. Skill 2 is good for last hitting because it allows you to position safe and farm from range and if they want to poke you from there, they'll have to tank your minions. And the only thing you don't want to do is to farm with basic melee attacks during the time they still have their abilities up. So I stay back and then with cooldown advantage, I can position aggressively to punish if he steps too close and then get away from minion aggro. Here I should have dodged away from the minions. Now once again I have the cooldown advantage for a few seconds so I'll position to punish. Slow into skill 2 and back away from minions. I stay back to dodge his long range poke and repeat the same trade with the cooldown advantage and then dodges the return damage. Now I'm healthy enough to stay in an aggressive position to punish if he gets close. So skill 3 becomes empowered at 6 stacks, which are charged when other abilities are used near Cassidyn, either by him or anyone else. So now it does 40% more damage and slows for 90% instead of 30 for 1 second. So right here, even though I could zone him away completely, I let him think that he can last hit, and so when he comes close, I time my forward movement to catch him. I don't go for the kill with Ignite because he's using barrier. I see the jungle's fighting and because I've lane priority, I can rotate first. But I get there and fat finger my flash instead of skill 2, and get us both stunned and killed. Anyway, back to the laning. The Ziggs failed to fully crash the wave into my tower, so I can just freeze, forcing him to overextend, which I can now punish much easier with my ultimate. Wait for him to use an ability so I can dodge with my ult, then slow so I can land my other abilities easier, and dodge his abilities. And by the way, his counter attack was late because skill 1 is a silence, which prevents them from using any other skill, so I only start sidestepping after his silence ends. And my slow got charged up from all the abilities that were used, and I repeat the same with an empowered slow as soon as he gets close to using the ability. Then I went too early before waiting for all my cooldowns, and also wasted too much mana on the second stack, so now I need to wait 12 seconds to reset the stacks. He still doesn't recall. Probably because Ziggs can normally farm from a long range, but not against Cassidyn, which he should have learned by now. Again, I step back to make him feel safe enough to farm, and ult as soon as he comes close. Once again, he stays after taking Honeyfruit, but this time he uses his knockback properly to interrupt my combo. But still, 
he really doesn't want to give up this weight. But now I can't ult because he will use up too much mana. And then I would have kept denying him everything if he didn't get saved by someone. I get back to lane before him so it allows me to push the wave and look for a roam and I end up catching him on the roam and just chase him down with my ultimate. So at this point no mage can really go against Kassadin and I just keep chunking him down every time he gets close. And here's another poke combo on the tower. Wait for the next tower shot and then silence into slow and ult away. They won't be able to fight back because of the silence and slow and you'll dodge the next tower shot by ulting out. My ult is on cooldown and he probably knows this but still I run towards him early just to prepare my position for my ult cooldown. because if I kept running away, I would have been out of range by the time it cools down. This will throw a lot of players off if timed correctly. So next I can just simply ult flash for the kill. If you're against a player who knows exactly how to punish Kassadin, you need to stay away on the first wave because they can hit you to draw minion aggro and then pull the melee minions to their side and Kassadin will be forced to overextend. Which is why in a similar position, I stay away and force her to overextend to basic attack. She also doesn't reset minion aggro and therefore loses the trade to minion damage. Now with no ability and her in a position to punish, I need to give up a last hit. But I stay in position to counter attack with a cooldown advantage. And now because I can farm using skill 2 range, this is not a position she can basic attack me in because it forces her into my full wave of minions to do so. I fail a few last hits, which is fine because this is a matchup I outscale really early, as soon as I get level 5, which you'll see. So all I need to do is survive until then. I did fail to manage this wave properly and it ends up in a bad position for me, so I ward one side and hug that side of the lane where I have vision. Here I knew she was going to trade so I opt into it because I have my passive shield, so I win the trade. Then I shouldn't have traded with just skill 2 because Orianna has lower ability cooldowns. I tried to hold the wave to recall on the freeze but, but I just about fail it so now I have to fast push before recalling. And now with ultimate, here's the outscaling I mentioned earlier. I wait for a skill and blink over it. This is a trade that I can keep spamming with my passive shield and she will never win against it without jungler's help. And it will only get worse as I build my ultimate stacks. So that was supposed to be one of the harder AP matchups. What about the easiest ones against AP melee champions? So here's another one who plays aggressive to punish the weak early game Cassidy. And this Akali was about to one shot me so I flashed. She's positioning aggressively so I trade, but didn't want to tank her secondary attack from her skill 1. But I end up greeting for the minion, but she makes the mistake of prolonging the trade into my minions and ends up losing it. 
And then I block her next ability with my passive shield using skill 2. And I step back into the tower so she can't follow it up, but I had to give up another minion. Skill 3 to last hit and poke at the same time as her last hit. She keeps forcing trades where I can safely counter attack and as soon as she lands her ability I instantly run to my tower in case she follows through, which she does. Ok so that was a player who was over aggressive and forced trades, what about someone who doesn't play over aggressive? So a trade with the passive shield will always be a win, especially when using bone plating. Now I need to be out of range of her ability which has a lower cooldown, so I pretend to go for this last hit and now I have the cooldown advantage, but she baits me in the same way. I level 2 with passive shield, I last hit and punish her with the slow into an empowered attack. And now with no cooldowns, I bait another last hit and dodge back then position up with the cooldown advantage. And another last hit punish with shield. Try helping my jungler but end up wasting my ignite. You can see how hard a melee champion has to work just for a last hit against Cassidy because she's forced to choose between losing a trade for a last hit or giving it up completely. Here I missed out on a kill by moving too far back, but she doesn't want to lose an entire cannon wave, so she stays and tries to predict my engage to outplay me, which is exactly what I was waiting for. So you can pretty much use these similar tactics against all AP champions, with slight variations. However, the same trading style does not and will not work against most AD champions, because your magic shield is useless and their basic attacks hit much harder. Yone is like an AD version of Cassidy because all his abilities are ranged and I can never use skill 2 without tanking his ability. He can punish me for every last hit, putting me under pressure so I end up missing a lot. But because Cassidy always gets pushed in in these matchups, it makes your enemies vulnerable to ganks. So even if you play horribly, as long as you're not dying, you can keep them pushed up and eventually they will get ganked if you have a decent jungler. This is a matchup that you need to sit back and only farm with skill 2 and force them to come into your minions to trade, only using your abilities to counter attack rather than attacking first, unless of course they waste their cooldowns and misposition. Skill 2 is a big reason that Cassidy can so easily survive lane because he can farm from range and if he last hit with it, its cooldown is halved which allows you to farm safely even in bad matchups. So in this lane, I stayed healthy enough to follow up on the jungle fights, but again, I need to be mindful of my early game weakness, especially after using my abilities. I decide to turn on Yon here instead, assuming his HP was on kill range, but I didn't realize that he still had his shield, which I didn't take into account. So I should have helped my team once I took him out of the fight. 
but still, I survived the hard matchup just by farming safely and punishing his over aggression. Yasuo is a little easier than Yo because his skill 1 is shorter range, so you can poke with skill 2 from outside of his range. But the defensive playstyle remains the same because his passive shield and bone plating will mitigate most of your damage, which is already low in the early game. However, you can find comfort knowing that just by staying even, or at the very least by surviving, you're outscaling everyone on the map. In fact, it's the enemy team that will feel pressured to shut you down because the clock is ticking for them. And for the hardest kind of matchups, Lucian is probably the biggest lane bully in the game, so you'll need to play extra safe and use your minions for safety. Here I farmed with a basic attack because he was running from minion aggro and then needed to last hit at the same time, otherwise I would need to give this up. And then with his ability back up, I need to stay back and dodge. Most champions that try trading early game tend to push the wave giving Cassidy safety to farm near his tower. So last hit with skill 2 and then try last hitting and poking at the same time, but he sees it coming. And then trade inside my wave and get his bone plating. He pops my cherry, so before I take it, I might as well trade so I can recover that HP and mana. Here we both need to last hit, so I can finally get a good trade with his bone plating down. And again, last hit and poke with slow. He fast pushes to recall, so I do the same. And I've successfully survived a terrible matchup by farming safely and fighting back against his aggression. That is the most important tactic against lane bullies. Position safe and only fight back if they come to you and you'll be fine. But after winning these defensive trades, do not make the mistake of thinking that you're stronger in an all-in against AD champions. 